360 cameras have been out for some time now, and although they produce some interesting effects and angles, I honestly have never found them to be that appealing when it comes to capturing motorcycle rides. I'm not into that whole warped riding vibe. I feel disconnected, confused, and honestly a little nauseous seeing the camera flip around everywhere. I like to put the viewer in the seat of the rider. I want the viewer to lean with every corner I take. I want non-riders to experience what it's like to ride a motorcycle. A little while ago, Insta360 sent me out their 1X2 camera along with all the motorcycle gear with it. Since then, I've taken it out on some test rides, figuring out how it works and how I could possibly use it as a tool for my YouTube videos. The concept of simply pointing the camera anywhere and having it capture a 360 degree bubble around the camera is strange and was hard to get my head around. This is so strange and hard to get my head around. But once I familiarized myself with the camera and the app, I set myself the challenge to create a cinematic riding experience filmed only on the Insta360 1X2. I published the video last week and you can check that video out right here. Okay, let's take a look at how I filmed this and also my thoughts and experiences with Insta360 so far and if it's worthwhile as a moto vlogging camera. Angle one, this is the base layer, the POV, point of view. This was a good test in itself to see if you can actually moto vlog with the 1X2. At first, I thought you couldn't. One thing that I discovered when editing the footage within the app is that I was getting no lean sensation, which bummed me out. Also having to make sure the view angle was pointing forward all the time within the app made me feel like it was a wasted step. With GoPro, all I need to do is hit record, export, and then you're good to go. Well, once I got home from this ride and a whole afternoon of shooting, I realized that there is a 150 degree field of view option. Damn it. This not only saves you memory, but also shoots the exact same way a normal GoPro does, which includes lean angle. Just a normal wide field of view with no post editing required. Genius. In saying this though, the benefit of shooting POV in 360 degree mode is that you can later format the aspect ratio to be suitable for iPhone, TikTok, Insta Reels and Stories, which is nine by 16, or YouTube, which is 16 by nine. So usually I'd have to set up my GoPro like this if I wanted to get 9x16 for Instagram Reels or Stories or whatever. Sync up my audio and then go for a ride. And then I'd have to come back and then flick it this way and do the exact same thing again, which is a bit of a pain and a time waster. With the Insta360, with this mounted and on 360 mode, all I have to do is hit record and then go for a rip and then I can in post choose if I want it 9x16 or 16x9. That is awesome. The Insta360 ONE X2 does have a mic adapter available. To fit it, you need to remove the battery door by gently pulling the tab. Make sure you store this somewhere safe. And connect the mic adapter. The adapter is very simple. It has a 3.5 millimeter mic input and a USB-C input so that you can charge it at the same time. The adapter feels cheap, I won't lie. And obviously the Insta360 now is not waterproof. But in saying that, it works fine. So this is what the X2 sounds like with the internal mic. So I'm using the Pebble Panda mic to my helmet. This is how it sounds. I'm assuming it would sound pretty much the same as how it would sound with the GoPro. We've got a bit of exhaust down there as well, which is nice. But it should be pretty clear. You should be able to hear me pretty well. So yes, you can absolutely 100% use this as your main mode of vlogging camera. As I mentioned, this is the base layer, which we'll build on later in post. Along with this, I capture my audio with an external audio device. If you're interested on how I pull audio for all my rides, make sure you check out this video right here. Now go for a rip through your favorite section of road. Just be mindful that it shouldn't be too long because we'll be riding the same piece of road multiple times and time flies when you're doing this stuff. That's it for angle one. You can just use that. You can use that and just post it wherever you want. Make a video, happy days. But for the multi-angled video, that's our foundation. So let's see what we have to do next. Now it's up to you where or how you mount your camera for the extra angles. Bubba Fett, I'm Bubba Fett. Hey, I'm Bubba Fett. The adapters I use were the clamp, which is very much like a RAM ball mount, the visible selfie stick, and this extension. That's it and it all fit in my little alpaca pack so nicely. For the front wheel angle, I mounted it down low with only the RAM mount. The Insta360 records in a full-on bubble. So just imagine there's a bubble going around everything here. And I've made sure that I've faced the cameras in the most important part, which is the front tire. That's the angle I want to get. So the stitching line is here, up, 
obviously 180 here and then 180 on the other side so I just want to make sure that the stitching line isn't going to be with the tire so I'm facing the one of the cameras in that direction let's see how that goes and the beauty about 360 degrees is that there are multiple angles that you can use from that one angle let me show you here's that front tire angle I was going for sweet we got it but now we can look behind and there is my shifting view. We can also point it back up at me, off to the side, see the world pass us by, or off to the left without any wheel in frame, which makes it feel like we're cruising through these twisties. Little hot tip for you guys, the lower you mount the camera, the faster it feels like you're going. Got all that road just going flying through, but just be mindful, if you lean, that thing is just gonna go and grind on the damn road. So be careful of that. So from one mounting position, we now have four different angles to work with. Talk about time efficiency, baby. That's that's damn efficient. The next angle I used was the pointing back angle. So we're gonna catch, capture the rear tire here, as well as my foot, and hopefully some sparks from here. We're gonna get some sick sparks from here. Hopefully we get that. Um, and obviously I don't want it too low so that when I do scrape here, it hits here. So it's up a little bit higher. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I don't like the whole fisheye warped vibe. So as soon as I'm about to set my camera position, I like to make the field of view linear. This squares off and removes any fisheye effect, making it look like the footage is coming from a standard camera. Just your basic normal camera. No crazy warpage going on, just that. Now the only downside to this, which some of you brought up in last week's video, was the lack of quality. The Insta360 ONE X2 shoots up 5.7K when in 360 degree mode. And the more you crop and zoom in on the footage, the worse the quality gets. Also, you can only export at 1080p due to the 5.7K resolution being applied to the entirety of the 360 degree angle, not just the window you're exporting. If anyone finds a workaround on this, please let me know, link me to anything you have. I tried having a look, lots of forums, everyone was saying that there's no real way of doing it unless you spend like another two hours processing it all or something like that. I just want a quick workaround. I want a quick like export at 4K option. That'd be cool. The only other way I could think about a solution for this is to export it as a fisheye. Just don't go linear. I guess that's the better way to do it. Quality over, you know, linear vibes. But I gave it a shot. I gave it my best shot. For the next couple of angles, I used the ram ball mount and the invisible selfie stick, which, by the way, works incredibly. I don't know how they do it. It just disappears. We're getting the pretty whack territory. <laughs> this is obviously... Got to be able to capture all of this here and all that down there and all that ahead of us. So I'm not going to go too hard around the corners with this one because I just don't know how secure this is. And also it might bounce around like crazy. So this is a good stability test. Actually, it's definitely going to bounce around like crazy. Alrighty, let's do it, shall we? Oh, wow. Okay, so this is the next one. Your rear boy. Same as the front, but at the rear. We should get like this angle here, and we'll get some downwards action there, the tire, and pointing back as well. This is like the Grand Theft Auto view, third person. Hopefully it looks good, and hopefully I don't look fat. Even with the bouncing around, it came out very stable. Then I also mounted it to my helmet. Now this one, without a doubt, feels very whack. I'm not even sure if it's going to work, but we're going to give it a crack. Hey! Yeah, well, look at that. There's a bit of weight. It feels, you know, my head just wants to do that. Could even put you a bit out of balance. So don't do this unless you're good at riding. I had a GoPro mount attached to the side of my helmet already. So I just utilized it by mounting the camera off to the side, which gave me the angle like you were sitting just off my shoulder. End up high above my helmet, which gave me this awesome top down view of my controls. Again, there are multiple angles from these mounting positions that you can experiment with. Now, when it comes to editing within the app, the easiest and quickest way I could keyframe angles in was to use the viewfinder mode. With this mode, you just press and hold the record button. Then pretend you're the video guy riding along with yourself. Just simply point your phone whichever way you'd like to see. I do this either sitting down or standing. I found this gives you a more natural feel when watching it back because it feels like it's handheld. You can follow the corners through naturally and film whatever you'd like to on the fly. This is also great for the ride-by angles, making it feel like you're watching the MotoGP. To zoom in while filming, just slide your thumb to the left. To zoom out, slide your thumb to the right and release your thumb to stop. 
From here you can take a look around to see if there are any other angles or effects you'd like to add. Now this usually takes some time to do, you want to get little angles, you want to get the good angles. So be patient, have a little play around, have a look at your surroundings, it's pretty cool what you might see that you didn't actually catch while on your own. But once you're done, export each clip to your phone's camera roll, then transfer the files to your computer and import them into your video editing software. Now I'm not going to go into detail on how to edit the whole video, but basically you have your point of view angle and audio as the foundation. Just add layers of your footage on top of that. Now this does take some time and patience to get some sort of flow. The syncing of the acceleration and braking sounds at the right points, the shifts, the ride-bys, so just take your time and have a bit of fun with it. Alrighty, time for the gripes. The issues that I've found with it so far is that the lenses do protrude quite a bit and are vulnerable to being marked or broken and look like they'd be a pain to replace. The camera and lenses survived that fall, thankfully. And just so you know, I wasn't using the Insta360 tripod here. It just landed on its side right there. Lucky it didn't hit the lens, man. Woo! So if you're gonna do this sort of thing, I highly suggest, it's, it's heaps bigger, it's heaps bigger. This is the one I used, it's so small. The base is tiny. And the Insta360 one's like out here or something. Silly me. Hmm. You are supplied with a rubber cover for the lenses, so make sure you place it on whenever the camera isn't in use. I've heard that there are lens protectors out there, but apparently they introduce glare into your footage, which isn't ideal. I haven't yet used any ND filters for the Insta360, but once I do, I'll make a video on that and let you know if it's worthwhile or not. The grab frame feature is nowhere near the quality of GoPro, as some of you pointed out last week when I posted a few photos on my Instagram. To compare, the Insta360 takes 18.6 megapixel stills when in the dedicated photo mode, where the GoPro Hero 10 pulls 19.6 megapixel frames from the video footage and shoots at 23 megapixels when in dedicated photo mode. Now just take note, when shooting in 360 degree mode at 5.7K, you will chew up about 64 gigabytes of data within 80 minutes. Ooh baby, that's a lot of data. In saying this though, they do support a micro SD card up to one terabyte in data storage, which is probably very worthwhile if you are shooting for long periods of time. Also when motor vlogging, try and mount the camera as low as you can so that it doesn't interrupt your vision. It is a lot longer than GoPro, so have a play and experiment with different positions. Overall, the Insta360 is a fantastic camera for capturing multiple angles from the one position. Not only is it a great companion camera, but you can also use it as your main motor vlogging camera, which is Awesome. Will I use this over my GoPro when I motor vlog? Seeing as though I already own three GoPros, probably not. Plus the video quality is just that bit better from the GoPro, which means that the images pulled from the footage just look so much better than the Insta360s. And that's something I do quite a bit. In saying that though, instead of packing two GoPros and having to mount that all over the place and change positions all the time and whatever, I'm just gonna take the Insta360. It also works really well when you're riding with a mate. You just mount it up and it's just capturing everything around you. You can look at you, you can look at your mate, you can look at anything you want or just give it to your mate and then it's pointing back at you and you can just see, you know, just trail you all the time. Just get an Insta360, capture the whole thing in one go. <laughs> Plus, the battery life lasts a long time. It lasts like 80 minutes of like continual use where the GoPro lasts like lucky, lucky an hour. And that's if with it just on standby. I mean, like, look at this sucker. That is a battery. And you can buy multiple ones of these as well with multiple charging bank things and stuff. So they've got you covered there. A little tip, you see that little yellow mark there? You gotta make sure that they're all gone. Otherwise it's not waterproof. So you just press that in a little bit more. The battery door isn't on properly. And there we go. It's gone. How good's that? So make sure they're all gone so that the whole thing's waterproof. And it is waterproof. It also makes for a great vlogging camera. Just hold that invisible selfie stick in front of you and you can look forward, backwards, look at you, look at whatever you're talking about, look around everywhere in the one time without having to flick around the camera or anything like that. I haven't even gone into the, all the features that the app allows you to do. You go into the shot lab and it shows you all these cool effects that you can do with different types of videos, even motorcycle ones. So if you don't even have an Insta360, you can just download the app for free and check it out. It's pretty incredible stuff. Now, whoa up! Before you jump down in the description and hit the link to buy one of these bad boys, you might want to hold off until the 24th of November, 2021. Which is when? Ah, oh, it's Wednesday. It's on Wednesday. Wednesday coming. At the time of posting this video, of course. Because they're starting the biggest annual sale with 10% off the One X2. Now, the sale runs until the 14th of December, 2021, but don't worry if you miss out. Because if you use my affiliate link, which is in the description below, you'll receive free 
accessories, which will be available ongoing. How cool is that? I think a free selfie stick or free lens covers and stuff like that. Free is good. Ooh, we love free. Now, if you missed out on the Insta360 only multi-angled ride, you can check that out right here. That's the ride that we've been talking about this whole damn time. So if you haven't seen it, you might want to check it out and then revisit this and do your own. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm Rob Hamilton. I will see you guys in the next vid. Ride safe. Ride very safe. Be a little bit safer than you were last time. Just be safe.